Family Theater presents Anne Blythe and Rita Johnson. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Reprisal, starring Rita Johnson. And now, here is your hostess, Anne Blythe. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Now to our transcribed drama, Reprisal, starring Rita Johnson as Louisa. I did not know at first that I was being followed. I had just come down the steep street that ends opposite Stefan's Platz. It had snowed heavily that day and the streets were deserted. Just as I passed the end of the Kurtnerstrasse, a truckload of soldiers turned the corner. I instinctively drew back into the shadows. Even though it was still an hour until curfew and my papers were in order, there would be questions if I were seen. There were always questions for anyone found on the streets after dark. Gestapo questions. The truck lumbered across the platz and disappeared among the snow-covered trees of the Volksgarten. I waited a full minute before starting again. And then, just as I turned the corner by the opera house and began up the Wallerstrasse, I heard the firm, heavy tread of a man walking behind me. I could not bring myself to look around, even though I knew that in the darkness I would be unable to make out his features. For that matter, his face was unimportant. This was Austria, 1944, and whoever prowled the streets at night was part of the desperate, failing regime that had gripped all Europe for the past five years. There was nothing to do but go on. Just once, as I reached the side street where the doctor's office was located, I allowed myself a backward glance. My pursuer was startled momentarily and came to a halt. At that distance, I could tell nothing of his appearance beyond the fact that he wore a black greatcoat and was unusually tall. We stared at each other across the darkness. Then I turned and hurried up to the doctor's front door. Late. I was delayed, Frau Kerrick. I'm sorry. You know my husband's hours. As it is, he's running a grave race. I know. And we're very grateful. It won't happen again. I just hope not. Come along. Godfrey? Yes? Frau Brenner is here. Oh, uh, good evening. Good evening, Frau Brenner. Yeah, doctor. Uh, come and sit down. Oh, thank you. You look pale. Is anything wrong? No. No, I'm just a bit cold from the long walk. There's still some broth on the stove there. Fix her bowl, Marie. Do you expect it at the commandant's at nine? A few minutes won't hurt. Oh, you're very kind here, Doctor. We cannot all be patriots, Frau Brenner. Commandant has insomnia. You don't have to explain. If Gottfried does not treat him, another doctor will. I know. Either way, he gets his pills. Believe me, no one blames you. I, uh, I hope that will still be true when the Nazis are gone. Well, then, how is the patient? Still very weak. His shoulder's beginning to heal, but it gives him a lot of pain. Here's your broth. Oh. Oh, it smells delicious. Thank you. Mind. It is hot. Mm. Oh, I wish I could bring some of this back to Kurt. How is his appetite? Everything makes him sick. Must consider for Brenner three years in a concentration camp. I know. And on top of it is a gunshot wound. I marvel that your husband had the strength to escape after what he had been through. 
You heard? They caught two of the others. No. I was at the Commandant's when word came this morning. Oh, how awful. May get worse. The SS is talking of hostages and reprisals. Of getting out the gallows again, like they did two years ago. You mean, they suspect Kurt is hiding here in the city? Not yet. The Commandant thinks he made for the Swiss border. Apparently, they don't know he was wounded. Oh. If Kurt learns they are taking hostages, he'll give himself up. Then you must see that he does not learn it. Men like Pastor Brenner will be needed after this is over, needed badly. Did you know my husband before the war? Only by repute. I remember reading the sermon he gave in Linz denouncing the Anschluss. If there had been more Austrians with his courage. Ah, it's all past now. Gottfried, it's nearly a quarter to nine. I'll be going. Oh, uh, here, I almost forgot. Uh, these capsules may help about the nausea, one each time before he eats with a little water. Thank you. Uh, about the money... Oh, that's all right, Frau Brenner, that's all right. Oh, we'll never be able to thank you. Use it for fuel or food. Get your husband well. If it's all right, uh, I'll come back again next week. Certainly, certainly. At night, of course. Oh, I understand. And do not phone. If it is an emergency, send someone with a written message. Very well. Goodbye, Frau Brenner. Goodbye. And... Is there anything wrong? What are you looking at? I thought I saw someone across the street. Yes, no one I can see. When I came in, there was a man out there. A man? In front of this office? Yes, he followed me from Stefan Plutz. Are you sure? Did you see his face? No. Was he in uniform? No. He was wearing a black greatcoat. It's... Oh, it's probably just a prowler. Uh, uh, wait a minute. What are you going to do, Gottfried? A step outside and see who it is. Is that wise? I am the commandant's personal physician. If I have behaved overcautiously, someone may begin to think I have something to hide. Even so. It's probably just some loiterer. I'll send him packing. Close the door. Your husband is a brave and generous man. He's also a fool. Can you see anyone through the glass? No. The street is black. Perhaps your prowler has gone. I wish now he had gotten closer, so I might have seen his face. Why is Gottfried taking so long? Perhaps he walked up to the corner. No. To... No, here he comes. Where? From out of the shadows across the street. Why, he's almost running. Something's wrong. Oh, what could have happened? Here, let me open the door. Gottfried. Be quiet, Maria. Frau Brenner, you have to leave by the back way. I don't understand. I want you to get out and not come back, not for any reason. But Dr. Any reason at all, you must get another doctor. Oh, can't you even tell me? I can tell you this. My family is not going to the gallows, not for you or your husband or all the patriots in Austria. So forget you know me. Forget you have ever heard my name. Five minutes later, I reached the mouth of the alley that led from the rear of the doctor's office back to the Wallerstrasse. For a few moments after I turned onto the street... I almost believed that my unknown pursuer had abandoned me. But then I heard it again. The sound of the snow crunching under his heavy step. I kept walking. All I could remember was the look of terror on Dr. Koenig's face when he ordered me out. As I passed the opera house, chimes in a distant steeple struck nine o'clock. It was another half hour before I arrived at the apartment building just across from the west end of the Hofgarten. I looked back once more. I could see him dimly now, tall and hulking under a street lamp that sent a faint flickering light through the wintry fog. For just a moment as I watched, he seemed to hesitate. And in that moment, I slipped through the shadows to the door, opened it, I climbed the staircase slowly, on tiptoe, pausing at each landing to listen. Finally, at the door leading to the attic, I stopped. Mother? Has anyone been here, Julie? No, no one. Father's been restless, so I... I was reading to him. He's awake? Yes. I think I've been followed. Followed? I'm going in and talk with your father. I want you to stay right here by the door. 
and listen. All right. And if you hear anything at all, anything, on the stairs or down on the landing, come in and tell me right away. I will, Mother. Kurt? Hello, Louisa. Did you see Dr. Koenig? Yes, dear. Yes. He gave me some medicine for you. He's a generous man. Kurt, something's happened. I was followed tonight by a man, not a soldier. I first saw him near Dr. Koenig's office on the Wallerstrasse, and all the time I was there, he waited outside and then followed me back here. Mm. But he did not stop you? No. But Kurt, if he knows you're here, or even suspects... It does not sound like the Gestapo. If they had even an inkling, there would be four of them breaking down the door, not one lone man. Then who else could it be? Perhaps a member of the underground. Some of the others who escaped could have made contact and told them about me. Kurt, two of your companions were captured. When? This morning. Dr. Koenig heard it at the Commandant's. Did he learn their names? No. But if they knew you were wounded, the Gestapo might have gotten it out of them. Mother! Mother! What is it? Out on the staircase. I thought I heard footsteps down on the landing. Go back and keep listening. Louisa, no. We haven't any chance. But one pistol won't help. It might. If there's only one man. What if you are wrong and you kill someone who is innocent? And what if I am not? And you are killed? You, Julie, all of us? Louisa, listen, please. There was a password and a countersign we used to use. It is an old one, but if this man is a member of the underground, he will remember it. You say it is a warm night, and he should answer, it is warmer in Berlin. And if that is not his answer... Keep the pistol hidden under your coat. Mother. We heard it, Julie. What should we do? You stay in here with your father. And no matter what happens, don't open the door. Louisa, before you do anything, make sure. I'll try to, Kurt. And be careful. Come in. Didn't you hear me knock? What do you want? I want to help you. What do you mean, help? I, I think you know. Who are you? I am not an enemy, Frau Brenner. It's a warm night. What do you say? I said, it's a warm night. I wish I could agree with you, but I am half frozen. I thought so. Frau Brenner, Don't move. you are making a mistake. I have no gun. We'll soon see. Put up your hands. As you wish, but... Turn around. I want to help your husband. I am not an informer. Then why was Dr. Koenig so afraid of you tonight? Because I chose to frighten him. He's the commandant's physician. I do not trust Lift him. Lift your hands higher. I tell you, I have no gun. Apparently not. But let's see what can be learned from the papers in your wallet. Sorry, Frau Brenner. <coughs> let go of your gun. Please let go of it, please. Thank you. I should have shot you when I had the chance. Oh, that would have been most unwise. Now, I repeat, I am neither an informer nor a member of the Gestapo. Then who are you? No more than a civil servant. I perform the same task now as I did under the old regime before the Nazis ever came. But that, that is unimportant. I have come here to help your husband and to ask for a favor. Julie, I told you it's not... It's all right, Louisa. Ask the gentleman to come in. I trust him. This way. Thank you. Have... We ever met, sir? No, no, Pastor. But I heard you preach a few times in the old days. How is it you think you can help us? 
When you are strong enough to leave the city, you will need papers, money. And you can get these things for us? I can try. Oh, it will take time, but I have friends in the regime, clerks, non-entities like myself. In their own way, people of that kind can be very helpful. And what is the favor you want in return for this? Oh, it is such a little thing. And only after your husband is much stronger. What is it? I would like to hear you preach again. But where? They have forbidden any assembly of more than three people. Oh, the risk would be too great. Oh, no, I, I don't mean a real sermon in a church. I, I, I meant if perhaps I could just come here once in a while, when, when you are stronger, and hear you talk. You know, we never hear talk like that anymore. I know. Whatever faith and hope and love we had seems to have been frightened out of us. But you, Pastor, you are an example of the courage that we need, and we will need it even more as the end comes closer. How do you mean? Well, the Nazis are frightened themselves now. You, you remember the reprisal hangings two years ago when the Gauleiter was shot? I heard something from one of our guards. Louisa... I didn't want to tell you. Dr. Koenig says they're thinking of it again. Because of us, our escape? Oh, if it were not that, it would be something else. But I won't have more hangings on my account. I'll, I'll give myself up first. But they would simply hang you with the others. It would save no one. Well, were you working for them two years ago when the last hostages were taken? Well, I, I had no part of that. Although a friend of mine worked in the very office where the lists were drawn up. Oh, how could you stand to look at him? It was done by lottery. Every fifth name with the SS staring over his shoulder, there is nothing a man can do. I would still not consider him guiltless. But what could he have done? What could any of us do? That was the group, including Bishop Merler, was it not? Yeah. And he died forgiving his persecutors like a saint. You were present at the hangings? It was an order. Every civil servant was checked. No one dared to stay away. Poor Merler. Pastor Brenner, now before I leave... Must you? I'm afraid so. It is long past curfew, but, but I would like to give you something in case we do not meet again. But surely you'll be back. I will make every effort, but, well, here, just in case, it is wrapped in this small box. May we look at it? Then I have gone, Frau Brenner, please. Oh, of course. Now, one last thing, Pastor. Yes? I know the man who owns this building... As long as you remain here, you will be safe. When can we expect to see you? Perhaps a month. I will come again when you are a little stronger. I must go now. I'll see you to the door. Uh, goodbye, young lady. Goodbye. Goodbye, Pastor. Goodbye, and thank you. We still don't know who you are. Can't you even tell us your name? Um, my name is unimportant. I, I would prefer that you think of me simply as uh, an unfortunate civil servant who has had to follow orders. As you wish. Uh, goodbye, Frau Brenner. Goodbye. Has he gone, Louisa? Yes, he's gone. What a strange man. Very strange. And greatly troubled, too. C can we see it, Mama? See what, dear? What he, what he gave you in the little box. Oh, I think so. Kurt? By all means, open it. Very well. What is it, Mama? Why, it's a ring. A ring? Let me see it. Here. Oh, it's a strange thing to give us. Not so strange. What do you mean? I have seen this ring before. It was a symbol of his religious authority. Whose authority? The man who was hanged, Bishop Merler. <laughs> mystery that hung about the dark stranger deepened, although the results of his efforts were all about us. 
A few weeks after his visit, I received by mail an envelope containing almost 500 marks. Within another two months, the postman delivered us a small, flat package containing three forged travel visas and a letter of credit to a bank in Switzerland. By now, it was spring of 1945, and the Allied armies had pushed deep into Germany and Austria. Our temptation to use the forged visas was overcome only by Kurt's certainty that in a month at most, we would be liberated. We had almost given up hope of ever seeing our mysterious benefactor again, when late one cool night, during the last week of the war, he paid us a visit. I can only stay a short while, but, well, I, I, I wanted to see you once more. Once more? Why, in a matter of weeks, we'll be free again. To see each other as often as we wish. And then we will show our gratitude, really show it to you. But you, you owe me nothing. <laughs> At least I owe you a sermon. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> You never even came to hear me talk, and I was so flattered. I, I, I couldn't. I wanted to, but... Uh, sermons can be pretty dusty. You were wise to stay away. Mm, perhaps not. That is one of the reasons that I came to see you tonight. What's that? Well, a long time ago you delivered a sermon. In Linz, I think it was, I, I read it in the paper. The subject was courage. Courage when you are being wronged by others. Uh, do you remember? Indeed I do. It was that sermon which sent me to the concentration camp. Do, do you really remember it? I, I mean the actual words? Most of them. There were times during my captivity when those words were all that sustained me. W would you say it for me? Uh, just for me here? If you wish. But it's a rather long sermon, almost half an hour. Oh, well, Pastor, if you would rather not... But no, 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 I'm flattered. Louisa, Julie? Oh, we'd love to hear it, Kurt. All right. Thank you. I... I think it began uh, in times like this. We have only one voice that tells us right from wrong. The small voice within us from God. The voice of our conscience. I watched the stranger's face as Kurt spoke. At first, his expression seemed unsure and troubled. But then, gradually, I felt he was actually drawing physical strength from the words he was hearing. Kurt spoke of man's obligation to his fellow man. He spoke of the thin, shadowy line between cowardice and bravery, between responsibility and irresponsibility. And then, Finally summing up, his voice low and wonderfully persuasive, he returned to man's conscience, the one true voice of right when everything else seems wrong. When Kurt had finished his sermon, the stranger rose, and after a few polite words, departed. Less than five days later, the American soldiers arrived, and we were free men and women again. And that would have been the last we ever saw or knew of the dark stranger, if it had not been for an incident that occurred nearly two months later on the sidewalk in front of the doctor's office, where I first came to know him. Ah, Frau Brenner, it is good to see you. Dr. Koenig, and how is your wife? Very well. And your husband, the good pastor? Completely recovered. We leave for Linz tomorrow. He's been given his old parish. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, incidentally, have you been following the war trials? In Berlin? Oh, that of course, but I mean the local ones. No, no, I haven't. Very interesting. They brought in three more convictions yesterday. Look, it's right here in the paper. I don't pay much attention. You will wish you had. Remember that one? The man in the center picture? Oh, has he been on trial? That's the man. 
Stood out there in the dark that night less than a year ago and scared me half to death, right here on the street. But what? Why? What are they going to do to him? They're giving him the gallows. That's what they're doing, and who deserves it more? But what did he do? Do? He was it. He was a hangman all through the reprisal. The hangman? All through it. He pulled the trap door on better than 50 of his countrymen, including Bishop Miller. Bishop Miller? Well, Frau Brenner, what's wrong? Don't you feel well? He gave us the bishop's ring. What ring? The one he must have worn to the gallows. Frau Brenner, take hold of yourself. Oh, the poor, poor man. Well, it's all over now, all over. The occupation's finished. Yes, it is. And all through it, there was a heart in the hangman when none was found in all of Austria. This is Anne Blythe again. Did you ever stop to think that one of the most perfect, the most beautiful forms of art is prayer? For art, whether it be painting, sculpture, the theater of any of the long established modes of expression is only one form of man's attempt to reach perfection. Art is an attempt to reach the infinite, the perfect. And that's why I say, Prayer is the greatest of the art forms. For in prayer, our dialogue is with God, and by it, we create a thing of beauty. We forge a bond between ourselves and God, and when we pray as families, the bond is strengthened by just that much in the name of him who said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. That's why Family Theatre tells us week after week, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theatre has brought you transcribed Reprisal, starring Rita Johnson. Anne Blythe was your hostess. Others in our cast were Vic Perrin, Gene Bates, Fritz Feld, Jack Crucian, and Jill St. John. The script was written and directed for Family Theatre by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theatre broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present The Man in the Street, starring Cameron Mitchell. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.